we're just ranging. Be bullish at the range low, be bearish at the range high, and don't listen to people on Twitter that don't know what they're talking about. GM friends, and thanks for tuning in to DeFi Logic's TA Tuesday at 12 p.m. Mountain Time. Server members enjoy weekly community calls, requests, chart reviews, and join in live discussions in the server. You can join with the link in the video description below. In today's community call, we will review charts for Injective, Trader Joe, Oasis Network, Dog with Hat, BNB, Demo, Bitcoin, for legacy markets, SP500, Dow Jones Industrial, NASDAQ 100, US dollar index, a US 10 year bond, and finally, gold. And with that, we are bringing up Eddie and he will continue the show. What's up everyone? Let's kick it off with Bitcoin like normal. Okay, so last week, if I'm looking at my boxes, it looks like I was looking for shorts here and we got pretty good sell, sell off from it each time. We've been playing a little low time frame range. You basically could just sell the range high, buy the range low, and you know, milk this little six percent range for what it is. Or you know, you can use our Bitcoin indicator trading strategy and outperform that even too. But right now, some like news that I saw come across about an hour ago is it looks like Vitalik was selling, and it's like a self fulfilling prophecy at this point that he sells tops. So the market spooked right now as we speak and it's going down, but I would just look for the same thing. If it doesn't hold this kind of range low area, you know, then we might get a bigger flush. We've been watching these levels for a really long time. I, I think that this is where all the institutional ETF people were buying. So there's a good chance that we retest their area, but at the same time, they probably just hold the floor. So we'll see, just keep an eye on what's going on with that. And obviously, whenever ETF gets approved. I think that's the time when you want to rotate into Ethereum because that's going to be the next kind of catalyst for the market is the Ethereum ETF. But that's basically what I'm watching right now. In order to get bullish on it again, it needs to flip this level, this kind of 44,300 level and get some bullish price action above it. Until then, we're just ranging. Be bullish at the range low, be bearish at the range high, and don't listen to people on Twitter that don't know what they're talking about. Basically, all I'm going to go over with this for now because it's it's the same thing. And then just to make it easier for people to see, I would say that basically any of this is the range low right here. If you start seeing the price action, get below it, close below it, retest it, that's when you'll look to short because at that point, we're probably coming down here and you'll just have your stop above the little high that it makes, you know, aim for right there. So that's what I'm watching for. Or of course, like I said, look for this to happen where you're getting wicks below and obviously people were buying it so then you could just, you know, aim for the highs again. So it's actually been pretty easy to, to trade as long as you view it as a range. Ethereum. So I had these like all time high retest levels that had been performing pretty well if you've been buying them. However, with Vitalik selling, I'm not interested in buying this right now. I think I won't really trade Ethereum at all until the Bitcoin ETF gets approved. As soon as I see that news, I'll probably just buy a bunch of spot Bitcoin in anticipation that the same thing happens where that starts to run and not perform, right? But even with that said, I probably would look for a better performing alt instead of Ethereum, like, you know, probably just pile into something like Solana or Injective or just something else that's looking better. But same idea for here, it's been a little bit more weaker and a little bit more choppy but it's still forming a low time frame range. The range low has been its uh, range breakout on the daily. That's what these lines are. I'll just pull it up in case you didn't see the last video. It's just these levels right here. If we start closing back in it, I, it's so hard to know how far down it'll go really, because this is all basically support levels. So I'm not like look actively looking for shorts on it, especially here towards the lows. Just know it's been weak and that's basically my game plan is I'm just waiting for the Bitcoin ETF to get approved and then potentially buy Ethereum because most likely it'll, it'll outperform. It's hard to get a good read on it other than that. Maybe weekly time frame will be better. I think same idea. If you start closing weekly below this 2011 area, that's super bearish and it could we could get cheaper prices. But 
For now, I'm not really trading it. I'm not really watching it that much either. There's nothing going on with Ethereum. Even Vitalik doesn't like it, he's selling it, so. And again, the ETH BTC chart just continues to show weakness. It's like about to fall off a cliff. It's at support now. If it loses this 0.51 area, it's just gonna go further down. So looks like I, I was anticipating maybe a three drive that came already and gave us a pop. And then it's just been slowly putting in lower highs over and over again. And it looks like it wants to potentially make a new low. It is near like historical lows though. So again, like, I don't think it's something you need to be super bearish on, but just, just aware of where it's at. Potentially it'll sweep this low here at this four seven, where's that at? Four nine level. If it can sweep in and get back above, that'll be a pretty good indication to, to get into it. There's also this low here, it could potentially sweep. So Ethereum's weak. Just don't mess with it for now. There's no point. Injective, that looks awesome, right? And they don't have any unlocks, I think, for the whole year of 2024. So it's a really good coin to be in. I think if you, from the last stream's idea, if you had a hard stop, you would have unfortunately got stopped out. It dipped a little bit further. But if you were just being with it, as soon as it reclaimed again, you could have got back in, right? And it went on a nice little run. So I'm pretty much in the camp that we should see a pullback. I just don't know how deep. And I'm just, like I said on Bitcoin, I'm just playing. I'm using Bitcoin as my intraday setups. Like whenever it comes into the range lows, I'm buying alts. And whenever it comes into the range highs, I'm selling them. And I'm doing that until it's proven. If this daily candle closes like this, it's it will pull back. It's looking quite ugly so far. I don't want to short it but it's one of the stronger coins, so I won't. But if it closes like that, a daily SFP is a pretty bearish signal. And then I would look to see if it can hold this level here. Because if it doesn't hold these lows, this is all very inefficient price action that it'll probably start to fill in. And then at that point, this is a pretty good level. This is one of those coins where I think you can just buy it for a spot for long term and just be happy. Just have your areas to look for. This wouldn't be like a spot buy section for me, more so just a like day trade to see if I can get the highs again. But if it can come down here, like just, you know, allocate some spot towards it. So those are the plans for INJ for now. Of course, if it makes a new high and performs bullish price action above it, then you can look for new setups. Joe had a nice run. I know we were talking about it like towards the lows in the server too. So if you caught that, or I don't exactly remember where, it was somewhere around here. So we'll just call it here even. So if you caught that, you had a nice little monster move and it almost went all the way to the target that I was hoping for. I don't think I'd buy this right now. Market's too weak. It barely front, front run it before. So I think it's a new plan. This is a very like volatile coin. It moves so much in a day. So it's definitely one that you want to just hold on spot if you're a believer in it. It has a potential to... It, I don't use this much, but if you can see it, it's like breaking out of a parabolic trend right now, which, where is that thing? I'll just draw it like this. It won't look as good, but it's breaking out of the parabolic trend, right? So went on a parabolic run and it seems like it might break down from it right now, right? Which it can be pretty aggressive if it does. So I think that it should stop around here. It's so volatile, it's such a wide area. It's probably like a 30% zone but that's how I trade. I just use big boxes and then I put little boxes inside of it. So that's the area that I'm gonna look for some bullish action to occur. And then, you know, maybe it'll come down into this one though, right? And then you'll just look for that fractal that I always talk about where it sweeps some lows. Let's say it's these ones. It sweeps those, comes up, probably sweeps it again. And then it, and then whatever high that made that low, once it starts closing above it, that's your signal to buy the pullback on it with your invalidation right there. So that's basically what I'm going to be looking for somewhere in this region for it to get bullish again. But yeah, it definitely looks good. The only thing I don't like about Joe is that it's on AVAX, but that's just my personal bias. Other than that, Joe's really good. It's definitely the best DEX on AVAX. So if you like red coin, Joe's definitely one you want to pay attention to, but it's probably going to come down here. Okay. Rose. So I don't know a whole lot about Rose. I think it's called Oasis Network. I do know that it's a really bullish coin. Oh gosh. And I think it's like AI related or something too. Lagging really hard because the market is moving like crazy. Dude, look, Rose is up when everything else is down. That's really impressive. Okay. 
So it's doing that thing that I've talked about before, where a lot of altcoins are breaking out of their long ter time frame uh, range, and it's already retested it too. So, and you have some pretty clear levels to aim for, like somewhere around there maybe. And then if it can take out these highs, actually, I think that I think it'll stop there. So it already did the high time frame pullback. Depending on Bitcoin and Ethereum, maybe right here would be a spot to get into the trade. I'd probably just play it like that even too and aim for that and then that and then the box. If you get stopped out on this, it probably finds support into here somewhere. Ultimately, I don't want it to lose this low here for it to continue going high, but it looks really good. This might be a little bit too aggressive. So you could just start CAing all the way from here down to right here to be a little bit safer, but it looks really good. I think it should continue to, to keep going. Oh, it broke out of this little triangle too. It hasn't retested it yet. And that's a bot, a wickless candle. So actually this probably, I don't know. I like this. This is how I would play it. Honestly, if you're trading, cause I don't care about getting stopped out. Cause I'll just get back in. So I'd go for that to make it really good R. But if you can't watch the chart, do the other plan where you're just buying all the way down to here with your invalidation being of it losing this low right here at 7956. But it looks really good. I like it a lot. So th shout out to whoever pointed that one out. All right. So there's a dog with a hat. I'm sure you've heard about it. Everybody loves him. I actually mentioned it pretty early in the server. So nobody realized that he had a hat for a couple weeks and then some people started to and then it started getting hype and then i mentioned it here that i was like buying it and it's gone up eight set eight x nine x around that since then and it's creating its own meta too so now there's ghost with hat without hat i've seen cat with hat so personally i like i'm not someone that can sit at a shitcoin chart all day long so i like to stick with the big boys and i think this one will continue to run higher to to i don't see why it won't hit a billion market cap within the next uh, cycle but you don't want to fomo in right here so i actually have some limit orders i forgot that you can do that with with jupiter so i have some limit orders like around here and then if it gets down to here again i'll just i'll basically pile in super heavy if it can get all the way down to 7.5. But yeah, it's a super, super bullish coin, really memeable coin, and I think it's gonna keep going up. So some people must have forgot that he has a hat, but if you chat, he still has one. So that's really bullish, and it'll just keep going up. Let's go over to Demo. Okay, so Demo's been pumping a bunch the last week. As you can see, where are we? What day is today? Yeah, so like this week, I'll call it here, it's up a percent, but then the last month it's up even more. Whatever Demo's doing, I don't know if it's a meme coin or, or what it is, but it's moving a lot. So let's check out what's going on. I'd be curious to find out why it's pumping, if they did something different or what's going on. But either way, we'll just assume that it's going to continue. So this is pretty easy. It's the same setup over and over again. If you watch my streams, you'll see like trading is very boring actually because you just watch for the same stuff over and over again. So it's really boring once you like know what you're doing. You just follow your system. If it can close above the high, I want to buy the retests of it and then aim for higher, right? What's the market cap really quick? Hold on. 594. I don't know how much Matic coins have been pumping but you'll just want to look at the your psychological levels probably. So at 700 million, look to scale. Wait, hold on. It's hard to say right now because of, of where it's at. So let's talk about dips first and then we'll talk about bullish structure. So ideally, I would want to see some of these lows right here, that low get ran. And if I could buy into it right around here, would, okay? I'm sure if, I know a lot of shit coiners like to use fibs. That looks like it's right into the OTE area. It is. So this is my ideal zone to buy. If I miss that dip, I miss that dip. If it only swipes this low and like it barely went in there, but it's like right here when I notice it, it's still a good buy because it'll, it should hold as long as it continues bullish. And then if it goes, if it closes above this, then it's what I've always talked about. So it closes above and then buy the retest into it, and then just start aiming for your psychological market cap levels, like 750, and then a million, and then a billion. So 
whatever this is, it seems like it wants the 1B. So $1 soon, potentially. Yeah, it looks good. Anyways, back to width, somewhere in this level, and then ideally down here if we could, we'll just put the fib up really quick too. Same idea, this is also that OTE level. So if I can get that dip, I'm just gonna load up really fat in it because he still has a hat. Okay, BNB. So we've got a BNB indicator developed in the DeFi Logic server. It's, like, it's performing really well. It's definitely outperforming BNB itself. Link in the description below for that. Join the server if you want access to this kind of stuff. It won't be free for too much longer. But let's look at BNB anyway. I don't remember what I was planning here at all, so I'm just erasing it. So BNB is a perfect illustration of what I was talking about earlier that we're just ranging. So it's tough to say if we're forming a new accumulation area or if we're forming dis distribution because referring back to Bitcoin, because we're towards the highs, I lean more in the camp that this is distributing over accumulating. Maybe it is accumulating for another run up, but it's so hard to go all in on that when we've been pumping for the entire quarter. And I've, I don't know, I know stocks like uh, equities are, are pushing new all time highs and stuff. So maybe it'll continue to go, but it's just so hard to know for sure. We're just ranging right now and I don't know if it's going to be up or down. So I've just been very defensive. I'm buying dips and I'm selling at resistances. BNB is at a resistance right now, but I think if it can close above these levels here, then you can aim higher with it. You have to be wary of these wicks and take profit around there, but that's still a pretty fat move. For BNB, 7%, that's a really good move. It's fighting with that breakout level still. So it's underperforming a lot of other altcoins, right? Most of them have already done this where they broke out of it. It looks like it wants to. So I think what it'd be good to look at with this is to catch that breakout, assuming that we're still pumping. I would look in this level. I like these candles a lot to play with. So I would want some sort of bullish structure to form in here to get long. You could even just DCA the entire box with your fatter bids being below the OTE that I've been talking about, which that's basically just these fibs right here, 6.2 to 7.9, okay? And then you'll be able to tighten up your spot stop once you see what low creates in there. But for now, I would just use that, raise it up as you go. Have to probably take some profit around there and then ultimately, this area will be hard for it most likely. So that's the plan for BNB. This is my main in invalidation level with it. That's also a high time frame, high or low. If it starts closing below it, then you have to be bearish, right? But for now, I think it's safe to, to be a bull. BCB, DeFi Logic has been freaking crushing this coin. Devs have been building over, like they're pushing out all kinds of cool stuff. Look, I called that load up zone and, and retested it a couple times and then it never has since then. So it's looking really nice. It's into this level, basically wanted to hold this zone that it's currently in right now with obviously there's all these lows here. So there's a good chance that it runs them and then you can name higher at that point. That's what I want to see. I don't want these lows to get lost at all. If they do, it's going to pull back deeper, but these devs seem to be on it. I don't think they'll let it get that, get this low, but if it does, this is a pretty nice spot to, to look to get back involved in. I'll just keep these ones, historical level. There's a chance to just find support here, but with these low caps, they're pretty wicky. So I would probably put in some bids right here for like hoping to catch a wick, right? If you get lucky, I don't see it losing this level at all. If it does, that'd be very bad for that coin. I wanted to hold this one ideally, but I'm just talking about like some uh, stink bids that you can place on this bad boy. Because if you get that, it should fly back up here and get yourself a nice little 80% pump. Okay, I think that is all for me for today. So with that, I'll just pass this back on over. Hope everyone has a Merry Christmas and good holidays. Oh, show. Thanks, Eddie. And now we will bring up GeForce to go over legacy markets and all that goodness that's going on over there. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, there's a lot of things going on. Legacy markets is really good. All right, I'm going to start out with the legacy markets like I always do. Always look at a daily chart. And uh, I should wear a Christmas Santa Claus hat like Eddie because legacy markets, Santa Claus has come. As you can tell, this is the S&P 500. It's just gone up and up. If you look at uh, right here is the first part of December. So this is December 1, actually, right here. 
So it just blew through 4,600 level and just skyrocketed within three days to 4,700 level. And it's just been going up ever since. So Santa Claus is in the legacy markets. It's He's dishing out presents to all the bankers and brokers. I've said this for on Tech TA Tuesdays for the last three weeks is that the bankers and the brokers need to make money this year. The S&P 500 was down 20% last year. So this year they need to make money. So they're making money. So they're printing money and things are going up. You can see how it tested the 4,700 level just whipped down and that was pretty much a non day on Thursday, which was last Thursday. And then it's just Friday was not much. And then we've just gone up and keep continuing to go. So anyway, that is the SP 500. It should flatten out between Christmas and New Year's. That's a very low volume and everybody is out celebrating their Christmas. So I don't expect much for next week. Looking at NASDAQ, let's take a look at that as well. It's pretty much done the same thing. Okay, so December, you know, first part of December, it, it's just taking off. It hit, I, I had a mark here. I showed this for the last three weeks as well. It hits the standard deviation line right there at 15,722. And then it's just gone up. Once it went past this 15,888, okay, then that right there is what I've had a high way back here in July 19. So it is just, that was that line and it's just blown up since then. So it's gone past the 16,000 level and now it's all the way to 16,789 as we're talking now. So you look, it's just climbed and it keeps climbing this 2X band. It hit the 3X band here on Wednesday of last week. And then it just has traded within that range between the 3X band and then the 2X band. Again, it should start to flatten out next week. It just gets exhausted. Markets get exhausted. They have a good sprint and then they run up. This is the Dow 30. It's done the exact same thing. It's just blown through straight up 3,600 and it had a little bit of breather right here at 3,600 and now it's blown up. Sorry, 36,000. Now it's blown up to 37,000. These levels just keep going up, as you can tell. Again, it should start to flatten out, but it's just, what can I say? Santa Claus is in the legacy markets. Moving on to the dollar index. This is showing the reverse, basically, and it should. You'll see that the dollar has, has declined back here. Like I mentioned before, in November, we've had four major drops in November. For the dollar index then it came up and here was a critical point the standard deviation line what was it going to do so it just floated around the standard deviation line and it didn't know really what to do it was thinking it was going to pop back up to this 2x upper band but no it just tanked right here we had news of uh, basically the bond auctions are not doing very well and that was news back here, back in November, and same thing here again. So we had a fresh new low here last week on Thursday, and then now we're just climbing back up to the lower 2x band, and right now we're trading right at the lower 2x band. So I don't see any move higher on the, the dollar index. It's just going to keep lagging and going down. So next, we're going to jump to the U.S. 10-year yield. Okay, so this is the yield on the 10-year bond, which is the most tracked bond by equity traders. Okay, so as you can tell, also in November, just, just like the dollar index, we keep going down, down, and then we had a fresh new low on the 15th, just like at the dollar, and now it's trading sideways. So this is actually good news for the Fed because of the interest rate hikes they've been pausing and they've been pausing because they see this going down so a new year is going to be a whole new animal a whole new thing but everybody's going to enjoy their christmas this year and i keep mentioning that but that's just reality so we'll keep going on that as well then gold and i said that gold loop it's actually interesting <laughs> okay you'll see here that it had an all-time high right here at basically 2070, okay? And then, and so I'm thinking, okay, is it going to stay at the standard deviation line or drop below? It's going to 
because last time it really I knew back here that it was going to climb back but it went a lot further than I thought it would on the downside and then it climbed now it's climbed went back down and I'm like okay is it going to go back down to this low again or not so that's what I, the question I had in my mind which it did it went right back to this 1980 level this level all the way back here back in July is a point for the legacy markets and also for gold and it broke that back here in October and play again so my point is right here at 980 what was it going to do okay to the standard deviation line so was this going to be a floor it ended up being a floor okay so the next day just okay it, bo it pops significantly so now we're trading and we're trading right at the standard deviation line it wicked down to that on Friday, went down to that um, again. We're having news lately that you know the shipping companies have to avoid the Red Sea because of all the attacks that they're getting on the cargo ships. So that's one reason why I feel that gold is. And I think it will eventually get back up to the 2070 level, which is this level here. I think it's going to head up there. Because if this conflict in the Middle East keeps spreading and it's spreading to the cargo ships in the Red Sea, and they had to reroute things, what else is going to happen? So the war is actually starting to take effect and show a little bit of an effect on gold because gold prices are going up. As you can tell right now, gold is trading at 2004. Okay, back to you, Pepe. That's all I have for this trading session. All right, that's all we got for this week. But if you're a member of the DeFi Logic server, you can request chart reviews and discuss markets daily with other server members. We are super active in there. You can ask questions, get the alpha, give the alpha, any alpha that you've got. And if you're interested in our trading view indicators, you can test them out for free during beta testing. So join our server now. Early members are gonna get free access for life. Do not fade us. You will have free access for life. And if you fade us, you will be sad. We will see you next Tuesday at 12 p.m. Mountain Time. GN friends. Join us next week in Discord for TA Tuesday at t5logic.com.